Hello, this is Deborah Anderson, the Black Woman Animator, come back to you with another video. And in this video, I have Matt Munn. Welcome, Matt. Happy to be here. Happy belated Founders Day. Oh, why, thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> now, uh, give a quick bio of yourself. Okay. Um, well, I am Matthew Munn. I uh, have been animating uh, in the feature film industry for about 16 years so mm -hmm. i'm a i'm an og in the game now i guess <laughs> as, as i am uh, an og in the frat i celebrated 21 years nice so yeah i pledged in the 90s so uh, <laughs> 1999 so i've had people say you you pledged in the 1900s so like <laughs> i'm that dude so uh so yeah no nah, i i'm uh yeah i've been been all over the place. I, I worked in Georgia for a little while. I went to SCAD uh, for, mm -hmm. anim for art school, then uh, ended up in LA uh, for about six years working at Sony, uh, Imageworks on a few films, Surf's Up, Cloudy with Chance of Meatballs, Open Season, a bunch of those. Um, then went to DreamWorks for a brief stint, and now uh, I've been at Blue Sky Studios on the East Coast here uh, for the last nine year, wait yeah nine years so uh that's that's the brief story of like uh who i am computer animator and, yeah uh, so i've had a bunch of animators but you're my first 3d animator awesome yeah well i will i will try to to do 3d animators Rep proud represent i will rep rep uh well today <laughs> all right so where are you from and how was it growing up oh um, I'm from Delaware. I grew up in Claymont, Delaware. I, I don't know if Joe Biden is from there or he just lived there, but he claims he reps Claymont mm -hmm. as well. So, uh, shout out to Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I grew up, um, there. Claymont is like in like the northmost tip of Delaware. So we're right at that PA Delaware line. So I grew mm -hmm. up like 30 minutes south of Philly. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, uh, that's the closest city that I, I, I whose home, whose sports teams I root for and everything. So uh, yeah, yeah, man. Like yeah, grew up in the suburbs. So for me, it was I'm I'm pretty much a like I, I guess that had a lot to do with you know what led to me being the creative like kid I ended up being that mm -hmm. led to me going to getting into art and animation and all that stuff. So I spent a lot of time. <clears throat> like finding ways to entertain myself, like <laughs> by drawing, I would do flip books and stop motion stuff as a kid and whatnot. And, uh, you know, always making up superheroes with my buddies and mm -hmm. acting out stuff and just a lot of stuff that in hindsight, you look back on and say like, oh man, you were always that dude that yeah. was destined to, to make work on cartoons and stuff. Uh, but at the time I didn't know. So I, I went down the path of uh, trying to get into like computer science and everything mm -hmm. and um, went to University of Delaware, mm -hmm. uh, you know, keeping it in state, saving some money for a college. And it was, yeah, yeah it was, I was studying computer science and um, it was, you know, uh, towards the end of that experience, like my senior year, end of junior year, going into my senior year where trying to make something for one of the games I was trying to code. I was trying to code video games. Uh -huh. uh, I discovered Maya, um, three oh. animations, uh, this three animation software. I was trying to um, basically create a, a 3D character or something. Maybe it was like a spaceship or, I don't know what it was that I was trying to make, but in trying to make this thing in, in Maya, I was I discovered that I liked that more than I liked the, the coding, the game. Yeah. So, I try. I had to pivot. Like I decided, I was like, "All right, well, I was gonna try to go into grad school for uh, an M, uh, like a master MS degree in computer science or something." Mm -hmm. But I switched my focus to try to then go and find a a graduate program for computer animation, and that's what led me to SCAD, um, which sent me down to Georgia, and uh, um, that's you know how I ended up getting into you know, the whole animation thing. But you asked me about where I grew up. So mm -hmm. Delaware is the is the short answer. <laughs> yeah. So 
what was your relationship with like art and animation in your childhood? Did you mm -hmm. draw or? Yeah, yeah. Oh, like I said, I was like, I was a good kid. Like I was never the one to get in trouble. My mm -hmm. mom will tell you like she had no, she only had one problem with me and that was getting in trouble for things I would be drawing in, when I, in times when I, it was inappropriate to be drawing. So <laughs> I have, I received many a scolding at, mm -hmm. at the least, like we'll just leave it at scolding <laughs> yeah. from uh, <laughs> from church. Like I used to draw my butt off in church in the church pew, <laughs> and like send them to my friends. It was all like comic strips that were meant to like get them to laugh out loud <laughs> when it was supposed to be you know us paying attention to the service. Uh -huh. And if I could get my cousin or my friend to like laugh and then get like pulled out and <laughs> in trouble, then I then I like was successful but what ended up happening 90 percent of the time was i would laugh while drawing i would be like ah! and next thing you know i look up and my mom's like <laughs> like and before you know it as i was in grounded or you know whatever like yeah same thing with school like i i i got anytime i had detention it was because i was laughing in class and the teacher was just like that's it matt you're out of here detention like let me see. Every now and then I would get caught like, what are you passing? And they, you know, look at the drawings and it was nine, you know, most of the time it was the teacher that found the drawings as a, some inappropriate drawing of them doing something <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> so anyway, point is that there's all these. So you were things. like a silent class clown. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I was the class clown. Like I'm legit. If you go to the 1998 high school yearbook, I am the class clown, like <laughs> holding nice. up some probably uh, my, my little sketchbook. But what's crazy is that at no point was I like, I wanna get into whatever, art or comics or, you know, cartoons like it. it that was never something that I, you know, I didn't know that was a possible career path. Right. So I actually went to, I, I actually put pre-medicine. <laughs> I went to, I had pre-med on my uh, college applications. Cause I, I always, my mom was like, one day you're gonna be a doctor. You're gonna, you, you know what I'm saying? You get good grades. You're gonna be a doctor. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> cause that's what makes her happy. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So I didn't, I made that switch to like computer science because I learned from a friend that like, wait a minute, people make these video games I'm playing and they yeah. get paid to do that. Like, I like video games more than I like doctor stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? So why am I not going after that? So. It was uh that that kind of led me to realizing that there I need to keep my options open mm -hmm. and uh, try to go towards something that I'm passionate about. And so one thing led to the other, and um, yeah, that's so uh, that's what happened. Thinking about why you majored in computer science, how mm -hmm. did you end up animating for feature film rather than video games? Yo, it's it's so interesting. I think that. The one thing that I'll say uh, that I had going, and it wasn't even, I mean, I've, I'm a flawed individual. I've got a lot of, I've got some strengths. I got some hella weaknesses, you know what I'm saying? But one of my strengths as a young individual, as a young man, go, from high school through college and grad school, when I look back, I'm like, yo, you made some smart, you, you for some reason, <laughs> I was not afraid to to change my path. Mm -hmm. Based, I was following my heart, and I'm. And yeah. there were at least like three or four pivotal moments where I chose the heart route rather than the brain route. Because in, in in times when even people that I looked up to, like I had a mentor, like, nah, this is too late in the game. You are three and a half years into a computer science degree. You spent all this time and money. You can't mm -hmm. go to art school. You got, you already got you've already sent application. I had already sent applications out to computer science grad school. Such like mm -hmm. I had an offer from uh, Carnegie Mellon, which mm -hmm. at, at the time was like, oh, that's a top yeah. ten school or something, yeah. whatever. So it was like, despite her, and I loved her, and she had she's been to this day like she has a special place in my heart. Like she told me like I think that's a bad choice. Like you're going to be a broke artist when you can be baller ass you know programmer like they make dough you know and i was like no but i want to make these video game characters so to answer your question i 
one, I went to SCAD thinking I was going to learn the skills that would help me be a game artist. Mm -hmm. So I did go to SCAD like, all right, now I'm going to learn how to model in, in texture, like Master Chief for Halo and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. And so it's funny because I, you know, in order to get your degree, you obviously uh, have to fulfill the degree requirements, which means yeah. you take a bunch of classes that you don't really want to take, but it's like, mm -hmm. like, I know what I want. I want to model and texture <laughs> Halo characters, <laughs> like, but I, I'll, I'll go take this animation 101 class and this whatever else painting class, whatever. So I took the animation class kind of, uh, you know, thinking it's just, I just need to do the work, get the, get through it, just credit, whatever, towards what I want. All that yeah. went out the window as soon as I saw my first thing moving across the screen and was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I just created life. <laughs> like right, there was right. like something in me that was like, I'm in love. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. In that moment, I had like that, like, okay, wait a minute. I got to rethink everything because now I, I want to do this. And again, it was a moment where I could have been like, oh, but it's, I've already... Yeah. With this. And I was, and I went to the, like, the, the, and I forget who, it was like the head of the computer art program and was mm -hmm. like, hey, I want to change my focus to animation and what I got to do. And then we, we just adjusted. And then I was like, I'm doing this now. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, and, um, and I leaned in, like, when, when um, I decided I wanted to animate at SCAD, the stuff I was doing, at SCAD was like, you know how people tell stories where it's like, you know, everybody was selling, you know, three things a day. So I was like, I'm gonna sell six, like just hustling. Like I'm gonna go harder than twice as hard as the second hardest work in the animator in here. Like I was like in the lab all night, like animating and animating. And I was like talking to, uh, I actually got my, my, we have to do this like thesis project where it was like, you're you're in this class for six months, and I'm. This was so long ago. That could be these dates. These it could have been four months. I have no idea. I'm like you're in there for like ten years. No, it's like six months. You're you're in this program and like uh, or taking this class. And the whole purpose of the class was for you to create a a project, like a like you storyboard it. You come you write it, storyboard it, create the assets, model them, rig them animate them, light them, like, and then you got your short film. Yeah. And all these, everybody in the class was like, all right, they're coming up with their short film ideas. I pulled the teacher to the side and was like, um, I don't want to do anything but animate. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, could I, as like a kind of an alternate version of this project the thing, can I do like five short animation exercises like I'll take this character that I already got offline mm -hmm. and I just want to do five dialogue tests that way I can just be animating for six months on that and for thank god the teacher was like no one's ever asked to do that but I get it like that sounds cool like maybe make those those exercises kind of related to each other a little bit like it's the same character going through five different situations or something and that while people were like I said other animators were working on all this I was just slanging them keys just, ah, 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 just on the timeline curves tangents <laughs> learning learning all like all the the get my ass kicked as an animator yeah and not focusing on any of that other stuff and and that's i think what really paid off and got me kind of you know that leg up so yeah. that when the first like few job opportunities came up you know available mm -hmm. i was like top of the class like the having the best, one of the best animation reels among the group of people that was coming out of SCAD at that time. So, mm -hmm. uh, so that's how I, I got my, uh, those opportunities, just following the heart, like pursuing what I was passionate about and then not blinking when it was like, oh, I don't like this no more. I want to go over right. here. Like I got, yeah. I don't know if you want to call that commitment issues or whatever. <laughs> like there's there, th that kind of mentality works great in certain aspects of life. And then yeah. not so much in others. <laughs> <laughs> man, but, uh, as you were talking in the way, uh, man, you, somebody created animation where it's like a, 
a double meaning of like, oh, we slanging these keys, and then oh, yeah. you just talking about animation. He's talking about animation. Talking like black. Yeah, yeah. Let me. Um, we can edit that. Just, just put a little um subtitle. Like he's talking about keyframes, animation. Right. Stay away from drugs, kids. Oh, no, that's lit. Like, <laughs> it's like black, but we know. Like if you in animation, you know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. He's, like a whole dialogue. He's oh, that. Yeah, I had a buddy. Um that i mean it's funny i was just on the phone with him i had to it's my it's a friend of mine he's also an animator named uh chris chris Lindsay. are you familiar with chris Lindsay? i don't know anyway he and i like legit i was like yo i gotta get off the phone i gotta get on a zoom with you like so i was just on the phone with him he and i were the, he was like my best friend uh at scad so together we got our first job together it's crazy we got i called him and he was like i was just about to call you this is, and I was like, wait, I got news. He's like, I got news too. We have both gotten hired to work on open season in 05 at the, the same day we got that nice. call. So, so, and he and I were like this, he's a brother from, um, from Denver mm -hmm. and, uh, we were at school together. So he, he was like my partner, uh, staying up late at the lab in the labs, just animating, animating. And he, uh, he and I had a whole bunch of that kind of slang. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we would call it key banging. Like we got we got banging to do, man. Like get like wake up, like <laughs> knocking on his door. Man, I was up late last night. Like it don't matter. We gotta stay hungry. We would do like make each other do push-ups when we would like catch each other sleep, like sleeping by the keyboard and stuff. It was like all these wild like terms and sayings we had and ri hard. like rituals. It's it's funny. So anyway. <laughs> Uh, Y'all need, need to cash in on that. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, like, okay, so considering your mom wanted you to be a doctor when you went to grad school, like, was she supportive or? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My mama, let me, <laughs> let me tell you about my mama. <laughs> she is part probably the reason why I felt comfortable making all these changes because mm -hmm. I... When I, I mentioned how uh, my mentor had um, discouraged me from mm -hmm. like going down, going like changing and going down the path of like an art mm -hmm. career. And I remember that messed me up a little bit because I was like, yo, is this stupid what I'm about to do? Because um, I think what I had done is I, I, I continue. I had to finish computer science, my degree, like I I'd finished the class, whatever, and I applied to some computer science grad programs in addition to the um, art schools. Yeah. Because I was like, I'm not going to get stuck out here. Cause I, I didn't mention, I got rejected by all of the art schools except SCAD. <laughs> like I got rejected, but I, you name it. I, I got it rejected by Ringling mm -hmm. School of Visual Arts in, mm -hmm. in New York, um, Academy in mm -hmm. uh, San Francisco. Uh, and almost each, each of these schools I have since gone and spoken at. And I, nice. and I let them know too. It's like y'all rejected me, but I'm here. I'm an out. <laughs> like you know, what I'm saying. Uh, talk like I, I I was just at Ringling um, th right before the pandemic hit, mm -hmm. talking to like animation students and looking at reels and stuff. But uh, all of those, none of those schools would were like checking for me because my reel, my portfolio was trash. Like I was I had a I was a computer science major, <laughs> so yeah. I had to like within half a year just bought a new sketchbook and just drew like, every, like tried to fill it up and it had mm -hmm. all these sketches that looked like somebody I used to draw in church and like, you know, never took it seriously. But now it was like, yo, just let me in and I'm gonna learn, I'm work yeah. hard and this and that. So, um, but point is, is that back to my mom, mm -hmm. at every moment I would, like, I remember, cause I'm a mama's boy, I'll hit her up and be like, mom, you know, I'm a little stressed cause you know, I got accepted and these are good problems, obviously. I got accepted into Carnegie Mellon and SCAD, but one path is drastically different than the other. And Maria is, Maria's this mentor, is mm -hmm. telling me that I'd be stupid not to go here. Cause I went to her like, yo, I'm torn. I feel like this is where my heart wants to send me. But but I also know that I, that would mean passing up on something. My mom was like, always follow your heart, baby. And I, you got, I will support you no matter what. Even if you go down in flames, like you can pick yourself up. You're smart enough. You know that. And I was like, I'm gonna follow my heart. And sure enough, I didn't look back. And I and I know myself. If my mom had said otherwise, 
she could have messed me up. Because <laughs> if she was like, you better not do that's stupid. Then I'd have been like, she's right. Oh, and I'd be coding as right now, like to this day, probably if that, if she weren't as supportive. And yeah. Her. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. That's, that's my mama. <laughs> Oh, next episode, that's my mama. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, we are some of the few people in the animation industry that are part of Greek letter organizations. So Indeed. what made you choose Alpha? Oh, <laughs> it's another, another funny one. Everyone has uh, different answers to that, uh, obviously. And it's funny because if you had asked me that question, like I said, I, I'm 21 years in now. So... Had you asked me that question when I was like a hype Neo or like five years ago, I'd be like, it's in my heart from day one. I just knew, you know what I'm saying? A5 was, was certain, you know what I, Like I have this hardcore, like deep explanation. The truth was, was that I didn't know anything about fraternities. I showed up, I remember, I, mean, I didn't know nothing. I remember when I was coming up in Delaware, I had, my mom had a Morehouse banner in my bedroom and i was i never knew what it really was she's like that's college you're gonna go to college like that and mm -hmm. i was like sounds good but i also remember my only experience with fraternities was like i had seen something on tv and i was like i saw some like cues or something or i saw a movie maybe it was uh like school days or something i don't know but mm -hmm. I, I just remember i got to college and i was there and uh a friend of mine was like, yo, another freshman, he's like, yo, you trying to pledge while we hit? Like, you you got plans on pledging? And I was like, he's like, you know, like fraternity? And I was like, what you mean, like Q-Dog? And he was like, nah, 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 nah. we don't <laughs> pledge Q-Dog. He was like, I'm pledging Kappa. And I remember being like, what? I don't know the fraternities. Like, why Kappa? He was like, my brother's a Kappa, this and that. This was a roommate I had in like a summer program. Uh -huh. So then I was like, all right, he's like, you gonna see soon as the soon as like schools that's like because we hadn't really gotten into the year yet. He's yeah, like, you gonna see that the cap is they the real ones, whatever you know. And so then, <laughs> then that was a summer program leading into like my freshman year. So then my first like semester, I moved into the dorm where I was staying for my full freshman year, and the guy across the hall was like, "You thinking about pledging the fraternity?" And I remember he was another freshman, and I was like, "Maybe." Now, I was, he was like, oh, yeah. I was like, you know, considering, you know, Kappa maybe. He was like, nah, Alpha, that's where it's at. And I was like, "How you? who they? Like, I don't know them. He was like, yeah, my brother's in Alpha. So these are guys that have big brothers and stuff. I didn't have none of this. So right. I was like, and so he was like, you going to see? You going to say? And so sure enough, I was just like, OK, whatever. So then we, should, we go to this, like, block party, one of those, like, you know, opening welcome back to school yeah. block parties, and they had all the fraternities representing, like doing a little like step little block party step show, which was like I don't know the ten minute thing. Yeah, could have been five minutes. I don't know. All I know <laughs> is it just so happened that that day the representation from the Kappas was like way too pretty. Like they were on their real pretty. We so handsome stuff, and I was like. Hmm, Kappa ain't it to me. Like, and then the cues were like really especially nasty. It was just like one of those days, you know, because I've seen many. This was like the stereotype of stereotypes. It was like the the highest level of that. Like shirts off, they might have poured some baby oil on themselves or something. <laughs> and I was just like, nah, they were like barking and gyrating. And then it just so happens that these the alphas came out. And like I said, this isn't how it always is, but for some reason, that particular day. They came out and before they stepped, they like spoke about history mm -hmm. and like they they said like recited like Invictus and a couple other poems and I was like, I was like, who are these guys? Like after seeing the the, the shit that I had, excuse my language, the crap I just seen, and then I looked at my boy who was the the dude who's like, I'm pledging Alpha and he was just looking at me. He was like, you see what I'm talking about? And I was like. I see. And next, you know, then these dudes just go into us. They did like one step. That was just like no jokes, no gimmicks. It was just like hard stepping. And then they did like front flips and landed on their backs. And it was like the, the, the craziest, hardest thing I'd ever seen. And they got up and just like left. And I was just like, 
yeah, that's the real shit. You know what I'm saying? And then, right. and then, but then I didn't, that was it until like a couple months later, that same dude who is now, you know, my line brother, he was a, that freshman that was, he, come, he comes up to me, he's like, yo, you know, we like homies by this point. And he was like, yo, they got an interest me and you trying to go like we can get on like in this next line. And I was like, yo, but I'm, you know, we're freshmen, this and that. But it just so happened because of that summer program we had done, we had enough credits to play oh. second semester freshman year. And the reason why this is important is because I was so young and so oblivious that I didn't know what I was getting into. Like, so I was like, he was like, you know, it just makes sense. He's like, we already know that that's what we want to do. Mm -hmm. Classwork only gets harder with each year you go yeah. to college. It's smart to, to do it. If we want to pledge, we should do it now. It's going to be lit because I'm going, you know, we didn't say lit back then. It was going, I don't know what the heck he said. It's going, whatever. It's, All that in the bag of chips. Yeah, it's going to be fresh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be whatever. He was like, it's going to be good because we're like, if we, we can, we can pledge together. We got each other's backs. We know each other. Like we'll get through us and it's going to be whatever. And I was like, yeah, how, how hard can it be? Uh -huh. Let's go. I show up. I know I'm a good student. I'm 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 personable, charming. Mm -hmm. If I have whatever, like they're gonna see in me this and that. I came through and I, I you know, it was me and I think I went to a University of Delaware, so it wasn't HBCU. So uh, it wasn't like there was like me and eighty other dudes I'm competing with. It was like I don't know how many people showed up, but point is, is that I made line mm -hmm. and I showed up day once with a smile on my face, like let's pledge. And I left there like, what? That first night, <laughs> it got real, real fast. And I remember being like, what have you gotten me into? <laughs> and he was like, yo, I told you it wasn't going to be easy. And because I'm not a quitter, I just, for the next however many weeks it was, I was on for like eight, nine weeks. I don't know. I went through the fire and I came out like, I never trusted you again. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, but not that, so my point is, is that like, I got into alpha kind of just like without understanding what I was getting myself into, but it to this day was one of the greatest, mm -hmm. you know, kind of half choices that I made. Like, <laughs> it's like the, one of the greatest things I, I found myself up uh, and, you know, falling into, uh. And, uh, you know, like some of my closest relationships came through that, the frat, you know what I'm saying? And I I became they it's 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 so weird. It's hard to like real like I can't articulate this like or or do this service when I say like I am such so much of who I am today came from having had that experience. Mm -hmm. Like I, I immediately came out of that completely mentally uh just transformed. Like I was no longer was stuff that was hard, like hard in the way it used to be. Like this right. is like, oh, everything was compared to the to the process. Like, oh, right. I pledged. After you cross, you're like, I pledged. Like, yeah. You're I like, oh, wait, I got to animate this whole thing by tomorrow. That means I'm not going to sleep. Okay. I've done that many a nights. Like, what is this? Why are you crying? We just got to get through this. Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to... I'm gonna die trying, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm no stranger to to like going hard, basically, and then right. just appreciating stuff. Like when things get rough, like I don't get but so depressed at, because you know I'm I have like a bit more of an appreciation mm -hmm. for the little things. Like it's just a lot that I learned from that, man. So I I I I, I laugh about how I kind of like got into it or yeah. like found myself online. But uh, it was all just like you know that's my path, man. Like I I needed to, that experience, yeah. and, I needed it. and I and the universe has a way of like putting you where you need to be. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so that's what uh <clears throat> that's how I ended up, you know, a uh, proud member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. <laughs> yeah. So um, what's okay? What's funny is that you know people have so many misconceptions about Greek life, like mostly because of white Greek movies. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> and I would right, hear right. people say that you know they're not the type to join groups, and actually, I'm not the type to join groups either. Right. Yeah, I yeah. Am yeah. A beta. yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So, um, 
people, you know, will join like a drama club or an anime club mm -hmm. or, and create some similar interest group, but then judge people who join Greek letter organizations. Yeah. So, but you can still be an individual while being a part of a group. Mm -hmm. um, and I fully believe that if you um, don't want to join a Greek letter organization, you shouldn't. But I wish people spoke about them from like educated positions, like mm -hmm. some of the people from older generations where I'll see people on Facebook were like, oh, I didn't join one, but I saw them doing community service or I saw mm -hmm. them doing this and that. So how has your Greek experience, you kind of alluded to it before, but how has your Greek experience like helped you in your career, whether it's through the network, whether it's through mm -hmm. support systems, whether it's through like that, just experience, even the work you did in the chapter, once you, once you, well, you know, the real work starts once mm -hmm. you get the letters. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's so much. Like, so first of all, I'll say this: that the 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 networking and the the connections uh, that I made through the fraternity mm -hmm. have benefited me have benefited me more than more in my social life mm -hmm. um, than in like the professional career right. life. And I think that has something a lot to do with just this industry and the representation yeah. in this industry. I know I have <laughs> friends that have gotten jobs and stuff, other opportunities because they knew certain people that were members of the fraternity and stuff and sororities, you know, um, like my sister, for instance, she has like an, a huge network. Um, yeah. She pledged Delta at Spelman and like, you know, there's del Deltas and business all throughout you know what i'm saying like everywhere I'm, everywhere i mean so um but for me for instance like when i moved to la um swear to you i moved to la to work on open season the only person i could say that i knew was that dude chris mm -hmm. that i went to college with like so or um grad school with so i moved to la like all right i'm moving to the other side of the country i'm still a baby and you know at this point in my life like never been like on my own as an adult. Like I've been in school. Now I'm moving to LA. I'm 3000 miles from home and I only know one dude. And it just so happened that this dude, Chris, I can't remember how it went down, but he got married, like was getting married like that year or something. So he ended up moving to West Covina, mm -hmm. which you, you know, is out there. Mm -hmm. um, but for people that, that don't know, that's like an hour <laughs> from LA, right? And he, so he was commuting to work like an hour or whatever. I don't know why he was all the way out there. I think that's where his wife was. Mm -hmm. Point is, I never saw this dude. Like we talk on the phone every now and then, but I was alone in LA. And I remember getting to LA and being like, oh, it's gonna be cool, this and that. And in like first couple weekends, I was like, oh man, I'm, I don't know what to do. Like I got nothing out here. Like I, I had gotten in my car just, <laughs> on like a Friday and just like, I'm just going to drive and just get off at an exit and just drive around. And I remember I was looking for black people because <laughs> when they, when I first moved out there, they put me up in a uh, Marina Del Rey. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, yo, LA is cool. But I I was in, I had been in Atlanta right before that. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, but I don't know, there ain't no black people out here and that's tough. And I don't know. And I'm like, I have no idea how to find the black people. I know there gotta be some black people here, but I didn't know what, I was just driving all around in the beach areas and stuff. And I remember I got on like the freeway and just got off at this, this is, this is, makes me sound so old, but like this is before you would just yelp, like where are the restaurants and stuff? I was just driving. <laughs> Back when, if you knew where you wanted to go, you have to Google map it and then print it out. Yeah. Or like, you know what I mean? So this, that's that's this. So like, I'm driving. And I remember I got off this exit, and I was just like, all of a sudden I'm looking, and I'm like, oh shoot, look, it's black folks. And then I was like, I drove by Starbucks and was like, nothing but black people outside playing chess. And like, I was like, whoa. And then I like, I like pulled over and rolled down, or pulled my window down, and was like, excuse me, miss. And she, this lady is walking by. I was like, uh. I was like, where, where, where am I? <laughs> like, what, what city is this? What town is this? And I remember to this day, she's like, you in Inglewood, baby? And I was like, hooray! <laughs> <laughs> and then I like, I ended up moving to Inglewood right after that. <laughs> and so, but anyway, I'm, I, I, I'm getting to the, this thing. So I was in Inglewood and I still, you said, you said I can go into the story. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm in Inglewood. And so now I still don't know anybody, but I had a, I, I, I wanted to buy a place. Um, 
So I was like, I'm going to find a really affordable situation to temporary um, stay in while I look for a condo to buy. And mm -hmm. so I found a roommate situation on Craigslist. So it was a brother uh, that I moved in with. I was living in like, he had a, a spot in Inglewood and he had like a, a, a one bedroom sort of situation like yeah. by the garage. So I was living in there and I remember being like, yo, he was a little bit older than me, but he's like an LA native. Like I was like, dude, I don't know what to do on weekends. Like help me out. He's like, yo, you come hang with me a couple nights. This dude was a blood. Like <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know until I go to the first party. I was like, we had a little barbecue. This is cool. Everyone here is wearing red. Everyone. <laughs> and I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> I'm from Delaware. And, and just, but I, I know enough to know when I'm a, amongst the, the gangs. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, this, I don't feel comfortable right now. And uh, something's got to give. And so I remember passing on, like, going out with him after that. And, and, and what happened was uh, I got an email one day from one of my frat brothers mm -hmm. from Delaware, from UD, who was like, hey, yo, Matt, I know you just moved to LA. You should hit up my man Jacques, this dude named Jacques, who j also just moved to LA. He's frat. He's I know him through the frat. Like, he, we, like, whatever, had some whatever. Mm -hmm. Point is, is, I reached out to this dude, Jacques. It was, that was the beginning. Yeah. So I hit him up, was like, hey, man, you know, my name is Matt. I'm friends with Mike. He told me to reach out. He was like, cool. I was like, he was like, this weekend, we're doing this little get together at my boy's house, like come through. It was like a barbecue. And I show up to this. This was not a gangbanger barbecue. And this was like the individuals at this particular event to this day are like, well, are people who are I consider family. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I met like three or four of my closest friends to this day at that thing. And like, I'm talking about people who will be, some of whom will be in my wedding. Like that's how close we are. And it's just like, I would have been at, I would have been going to blood parties or driving aimlessly around Marina Del Rey if I hadn't made that frat connection that kind of met, introduced me to all these other people. And and just off the strength, it was like, oh yeah, come through, you're, you're already good here. Right. Because, you you know we we connect on that you know <laughs> organization thing so like so anyway that's like the the best like uh social connection that i made through my frat fraternity network um like that guy to this day he lives here in new york now so we still kick it but uh, yeah yeah man it's like that kind of thing and um and 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 there have been since then at least two or three brothers who are in a in our inner like tribe mm -hmm. who came through because like a friend of mine hit me up like hey Matt I got a cousin who's your frat he just moved to L A he don't know anybody and this is like by now I'm like four years in I'm like yo come through next you know this is one of the the homies and he he we love him he knows everybody he's he's still out there this is like it's beautiful for that reason so yeah. like, you you can always seek out that you know, your your fraternity or sorority. Yeah. Um, the sisters, wherever you go in the world, like that, you know, I mean, that's the idea. You should be good at least to, to like make those connections, you know, socially. So, um, you know yeah. how small the world is. So yeah. um, I went to Rochester Institute of Technology and yeah. I came through Chi Lambda and the uh, Sigma's there is Iota Phi. Mm -hmm. I went to South Korea <laughs> and met a wow. dude in the military who was iota Phi. Wow. And I was like, and he, Not, was, he was like the ex-husband of favorite Zetas. Wow. That's and amazing. I was like, I'm on the other side of the world and I met a dude that went to my fraternity, I mean, to, to my university and, and it, pledged Sigma. Exactly. Not just Sigma, but not just a Sigma, which is already dope. Like I'm in Korea and I yeah. met a, a Sigma, but you met somebody that pledged the chapter of your like school. Like that's crazy. Yeah. On the other side of the world. Yeah. yeah. The world amazing. is so small. Yeah. It's so yeah. big, but it's so small. Yeah. But it's 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 interesting how different like technology because since um like when I was a freshman, that's mm -hmm. when they started letting Facebook be outside of like Harvard and yeah. all the yeah. schools and stuff. Mm -hmm. So our like finals week freshman year is when we got Facebook. Mm -hmm. 
So after like spring 06, after I became a Zeta, I was like, automatic network, let me try this out. Yeah, so I yeah, yeah. Virginia and like hit up some random like Zetas and Sigmas. Yeah. You know, like, let me try this networking out thing. And they took me around the mall and all this stuff. Yeah. So it's just so interesting. I guess back then you didn't have Facebook, so you can't you couldn't just like look nah, up. Nah, I couldn't just like Facebook or IG just frat in LA. Like I didn't know where they were. Now they got group group me's, they got yeah. oh yeah, Discord, they got everything now. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, so okay. Let's uh so with with animation okay so you're I don't I don't think you have an IMDb so can you like list all the stuff you've worked on I th- so actually there's I think there's an IMDb page but for- it just has like three things on it oh so last time I this God knows what it is now because I so I will say yeah I confess I have no if there is an IMDb page I have had nothing to do with it there was <laughs> at one point there was a page where. There's another Matt Munn out there. Yeah, there is. Yeah, who's like in the industry. He's like a in a producer or something. Yeah. And I saw an animation I, department Matt Munn, but it only had like three things. And I'm like, oh, well, that's, okay, that's yeah. where my research ends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe that's maybe that's the true page that my neglected, like non-updated version. But in there was a period of time where our mine had like people, some whoever was updating these things, they were like merging the two Matt Munn stuff. Oh, okay. My, my career looks extremely pro- uh, prolific <laughs> because it was like, damn, you animated on Cloudy and you were producing Smallville the same year? Like, damn. <laughs> and just like, uh, you know, I'll just be like, yeah, of course. I mean, what are you doing? You, you need to get, you need to step it up. <laughs> right. But uh, no, like I, uh, yeah, I, I have not, been what happened it's interesting because when you first kind of when you're in that part of your career where you're still like trying to get those opportunities you know maybe you haven't had enough um you're 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 still building up your demo reel this is a big thing in animation as you know it's like you you have that like you don't you're not secure you're like i i got a job maybe right now but i need to constantly be like i it's just like I need that next juicy shot to add to my reel to give yeah. me a little more security in case I got to go get another job. And, you know, I know that my contract for this specific, you know, project I'm working on ends when this project ends. And I don't know if they're going to keep me on for the next one because I was a part of the the young temp hires that they brought, you know, that kind of thing. So there's a that early part of my career. I was really on top of like making sure that I had my demo reel up to date. I had... Yeah. A website. It was like mattmon.com and Matt's animation, whatever. I don't know what it was called. Um, but anyway, like it was always if so, I would be like, if you look me up on, I don't think we were on LinkedIn like that, but it's like those things were all tight. Whereas yeah. now you get comfortable and right. like I haven't and this is a blessing, but it's also just like kind of like I should be ashamed of myself for not caring more. But like you start getting to the point where you're just like. Oh yeah, I I'll cut a reel when it's time to like cut a reel. Like mm. you, especially if you're like at a job where, I mean, God, I I hope things remain this way. But for like the last like decade, I almost I've been at Blue Sky, and it's been yeah. we've been you know steady working on cool ass projects. Everything's been mm. good. I didn't I have never felt like you know nervous about my job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so that stability just you get lax. You start. You stop like my LinkedIn updates are terrible. Like mm-hmm. you can't find a real more recent than like 2010 um, on YouTube from me. And it's it's just uh so I don't know what's out there is the answer to your question as far as IMDB stuff. Um but like just give give us a list of projects. Oh, okay. Uh so the the first 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 was Delgo. Uh, mm. Hero Journey. We cannot that forget one there. that. <laughs> okay, that, that, and that's a shame that out of the ones that are on there, that's on it. So the thing with Delgo is that's what I, well, I was in Atlanta. So what happened was I was uh, in grad school at, in Savannah, um, and one of the degree requirements is you got to get a, you got to do a, like a three months internship somewhere. 
Okay. Which is really weird. Cause like, what if you don't get a job opportunity? You just stay in school, like keep paying them. I don't know how that works. Fortunately, I had an opportunity. So I did three months in Atlanta um, because there was a small film, like super small studio that um, was like a private, some rich real estate dude had an idea for a movie and was like, I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. The kind of thing you think about but you don't know how to execute, but you just think like, oh, I'll just do a movie, I'll make a movie. And so like he rented space. Um, it was a studio called Fathom Studios. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to talk bad about it. Like, but it was, it was like, when I say small, it was, there was the time when I, there was a time when I was trying to leave to pursue something else. And they were like, we need you to stay because if you leave, you're literally 25% of our animation production. There's four of you right now. So I was like, so I was working there on this project called Delgo, which um, is uh, very few people have ever heard of it. I feel like I've heard of it before and I don't know who from. Probably from me. I don't know how long ago. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, it was probably from me. And it was 2004 when I was working on it. And like I said, I don't talk bad about people or whatever, but the uh, I think that project flopped. It was like record breaking the way that it made no money <laughs> when it came out. But that was like the internship that ended up that I was at when I got the first opportunity to go to work at Sony in LA. So I was applying for jobs while I was at Fathom Studios. Okay. And so, I, so that's why I was in Atlanta for like in what th- three months ended up being like nine months or to a year or something like that. Then I ended up um, to, uh, in LA. So I, at Sony, I worked on um, <clears throat> Open Season, mm-hmm. um, uh, Surfs Up. I, I mentioned Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. There was like some uh, we do v, d, did VFX stuff there as well. So it was like Speed Racer, Prince Caspian, the I Am Legend. Mm-hmm. There was like it was a lot of like, just like projects, you know what I mean? Uh, And then I left there because I was like, I had been there for like five years or something. And I was just like, oh, I want to try something new. Like DreamWorks is popping, it's right down the street. Like that's the cool thing about LA. So I applied to to DreamWorks and um, started working there uh, and worked on Puss in Boots. Mm -hmm. I came in my first week, like my first month there, they were celebrating drag how to train your dragon coming mm-hmm. out and i remember crying for two reasons when i went to the screening i was crying because the movie when when they at the end when like he survived and they show him with his leg and i was just like ah, ah. and then i was also crying because i was like you should have come here a year earlier because you could have worked on that to this day be- until spider-man into the spider-verse came out Dragon was like my favorite, like yeah. animated movie. So I was so sick that I missed it. Like mm-hmm. I was like, ah, oh, I'm, and then I'm working on Puss in Boots. And so um, basically I was only there for a year and a half mm-hmm. because uh, I ended up getting an opportunity to come out to Blue Sky. Mm-hmm. Um, and Blue Sky was always like my f- number one choice where I wanted to work because I'm from mm-hmm. the East Coast. And I was right, like, right. this is the only way I can be close to mama and do 3D animation for feature. Right. And uh, and it was just like things lined up so mm-hmm. that I was ready to leave LA and come to New York. Mm-hmm. Uh, at that time, I had just like met a girl, a, a woman. I, I was like, mm, I'm, <laughs> she's in, she's gonna be living in New York, and Blue Sky's there. And then and then like things, it was just like all these stars lined up, and I was like, it's time. And then I left. And mm-hmm. so um, I uh, so all I did at DreamWorks was. A little bit of the, um, there was a, there's a short on how to train your dragon. So I did get to animate some of the characters, but it was for like the bonus little yeah. short on the DVD. It's called like the Legend of the Bone Napper or something, which is really weird. Um, uh, by the way, about, about remember just to bring it back to you know how I told you I would get in trouble for laughing. Uh-huh. To this day, even as a grown man, I just turned forty. So as a grown ass man, my one of my weaknesses to this day is if something is funny. And the environment is quiet. It's a. It's. I have struggles. Like I don't even even need to know exactly what we're laughing at. Like if you, if we are in a meeting, that and you like look at me and you go, I'm gonna be like, what's up? Why are we laughing? 
<laughs> and I'll get like I, people will look at me and I have to excuse myself. It's weird. So I just mentioned it because when I my first it was orientation at DreamWorks. I'm like, you know, I got my button up shirt on. I'm like trying to be like, hey, I'm Matt. Nice to meet you. I'm a new animator here. We sit in our first meeting and they're like, okay, guys, so you're gonna be working on the legend of the bone napper. And I was just like, hmm, what, what the f-? and and I was looking around like nobody else thinks that's funny. <laughs> and for some reason, they were just on on like this is just you might have to edit this out, but like they were they were up on in front of us, like, okay, so this guy, this this dragon, he's just searching the world for his perfect bone. And I was just like, it's so like my first day. I don't want to be like getting fired for being immature on my first day. <laughs> so anyway, uh, oh my god. So anyway, that I I got to work on that, and then worked on Puss in Boots, and then I was out for love. I went to New York, and uh, and then been at Blue Sky since 2011, and uh, was uh, working. Um, on two Ice Age, I worked on two Ice Age movies, the Peanuts movie, one Rio movie, um, Spies in Disguise, Ferdinand, you know what I mean? And uh, I think that's it. And now we're uh, we're working on some cool, cool stuff for Disney mm-hmm. Plus right now. Yeah. Woo, okay. Yeah, so that's um, it. <laughs> so tell us about your... Um... You're cloudy with a chance of meatballs animation fail. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that's funny. You remembered that story, yes? Okay, so that was because it, it's was, an important lesson in it, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this cloudy with a chance of meatballs, um, moment was it's, it's super memorable. Basically, uh, it was a lesson in filmmaking and knowing that in, in in treating your individual assignment uh kind of with consideration for the entire for the the story mm-hmm. and not not in in caring less about your personal glory you know what i mean because i you know was was you know still relatively young in my career so when i got that as um what happened was I'm working on Cloudy and I'm still, I'm like an animator within this this studio in this department mm-hmm. who still trying to like prove himself yeah. as like, I'm one of the big dogs. You can give me a big dog shot. Like mm-hmm. I have been, you know, the young guy that's like, you know, you know, still, there's, there's still, I'm not senior level yet. I'm, I'm like, maybe not junior animator, but like in that regular animator, mm-hmm. you know, Point is, is like there are there are some shots that are beasts that are yeah. like oh, these shots are hard. There's a lot going in on in them. They need to be really appealing. If you give this to somebody that can't handle it, they might really struggle to finish it, and and it might not look that great. And we need this one to really sing. So we're gonna give it to the people we can trust. And so yeah. I'm constantly like, you know, trying to uh, like make sure that my the supervisors know like, yo, come on, give me give me. Give me, I saw that sequence coming out. I want that shot. Like I will kill it. I got ideas. Whatever. This so so this this one shot gets assigned to me, and Cloudy was a good show for me because it was one of those where I started to get some bigger shots, like yeah. bigger than I had been getting in the past. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you get a shot that's ten seconds long, you go back to like your desk, like yo, <laughs> they just gave me a ten second monster. This is about to be crazy. So like they gave me the uh, shot in Cloudy, for, and for anyone who's familiar with it, it's like kind of memorable. It's like the moment where the nerdy kid like learns how to throw snowballs, mm-hmm. um, and so you know he she, there he's like, "What are people doing?" And they're like, "Yeah, they're having a snowball fight." You know, like pick up some snow and throw. He's like, "What do you mean like this?" And they're like, "No, silly, you gotta throw it." And then he's like, "Oh, snowball!" And he starts going crazy, like too crazy. He like starts running around throwing snowballs at people and then runs in someone's house. Yeah. And, then, and so they, when we were getting launched on the sequence, they were like, all right, we're going to cast the shot of him running through the house to Matt. Mm-hmm. And I remember being like, I'm about to murder this thing. And so like, I get back to my desk and I basically, uh, I put a level of detail into this blocking that was unprecedented. Like I, 
I went so hard. I spent like a week animating like every nuance like like I filmed reference of myself running through the hallway, bouncing off the walls, all this stuff. Like, you know, he runs in, throws a snowball at the dad, reading the newspaper, then like jumps in the air, runs like, like I'm, I'm like doing all this beautiful, going way too hard for your first pass. Like you should never, kids <laughs> at home, make sure to show a rough pass before you begin fleshing out your animation. Otherwise this can happen to you. Right. I went to, I show, I was showing my supervisor, my lead. He was like, he was like, damn, this is looking great. Like you're off to a great start. Like, you know, yeah, let's get it in front of him. And I was like, hold on, I'm going to put some more into it. So I, didn't, <laughs> I was just going to like this, like that. So the way that I showed up to Daily's when I was showing up, it was like, all right, we're about to look at Matt's shot. First look, I was like, wait till they see this. There's a video, I'm sorry if I'm like digressing. There's a video of, um, uh, I want to, it wasn't, was it Timberland? Timberland was like playing a beat for Jay-Z. Uh -huh. And like, I just recently saw this and it was like, whatever. And I remember, I think it was Timberland. I don't remember. It was one of those producers. And I remember he was like, you ready for this? And he had that look in his eyes like, yo, will you hear this? And he played it and Jay-Z was like, no, and he was like, uh huh, yeah, and so that's how my energy was. And that's what I was like, y'all ready? We're like, all right, I was like, go ahead, play it. And they looked at me, they played it, and the directors were like, yo, this is really good, but we need you to like, like change it like completely because it's too much animation. Like, we just want them to run in, just like, just like. Just up and down, straight down the hallway, like, because that's the style. Yeah. The style of Cloudy was not all flourishy, like, natural, beautiful arts. It was just like, like, very snappy and dumb. They basically said, their literal words were, it's not dumb enough. Make it more dumb. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and I'm in my mind, I'm thinking, if they just let me continue down this path, what I will create would be the greatest thing for my reel. Like my reel would be so amazing if they let me polish this. But right. instead they delete it all and convert it to just And I was just like, I legit had to go home, back to my desk, I logged off and I just went home and had one of those like <laughs> dark night of the soul moments. I was like in the back of the shower like, oh, just like <laughs> depressed. I didn't, I was like mad at the world. I was, cause basically it's almost like you spend so long trying to perfect your art. Mm -hmm. And then the first, like your, the, the, your favorite thing you've ever done, something that you're so proud of. You're like, I can't believe I painted this. And then for, to have somebody just take it like, shh. We just wanted over. to share. <laughs> yeah, why did, you, why did you paint Mona Lisa? We just wanted you to make a, a stick figure. And you're like, you don't know shit. like you're just mad. I was so mad. I, I had hatred in my heart for those two. But here's what's crazy is like when when I finally got it done, when you look at it, you're like, yeah, what I was gonna do was not gonna work. It would have been like a style change in midway through the scene, like it would have made no sense. Mm -hmm. And and it, and their choice was funnier. It's like it's it doesn't look as beautiful as right. animation, but it's it's more appropriate. It's actually funnier. And like, you know, I should have thought to sh at least show what I, where I was going way earlier. And so it was just like a lesson and just like, okay, I got to number one. And this is like, it's like, again, like just having, learning how to, to, to maneuver through ass kickings, which is like part of, part of, I tell um, some animators that are like the young, the youngins. I'm like, yo, learning how to animate is like the first step, and then learning how to respond to people beating the shit out of your animation, like reanimating, is a that's what t makes you a professional, right? Because you can animate if without any kind of without facing any kind of resistance, mm -hmm. but when you've animated a whole like performance, and the director's like, all right, right here in the middle. Instead of doing that, do this. 
-hmm. and finding a way to Frankenstein that new choice yeah. within this and and have it seamlessly blend into what you've already put in there, like knowing how to like, all right, I'm gonna delete all the keys from here and then try to work in this. And it's like, that's that's what's hard. Yeah. You know, so like, and I had to learn how to like, not only psychologically and mentally, you know, deal with the, 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 the stress of like having to read work stuff, something that you love. Yeah. Um, you all learn how to technically uh, accomplish that. You know what I mean? Cause that alone can be like, I, how do I do that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. To your point, like that's how I like, cause I watch a lot of YouTube shows or like um, indie stuff. And, mm -hmm. and you see it sometimes now in like professional stuff where I'm like, did they know they could have just reshot that scene and yeah, yeah, yeah. without that like flub or without that whatever mm -hmm. is in the scene? I'm like, mm -hmm. y'all know y'all could do it over. You didn't have to just use what like we have digital cameras now. Like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You film like you could do it again. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's real. I think the key is like, um, as as novice like professionals, we have to learn that the director or the company has a vision and we have yeah. to do their vision, not our vision. Exactly. That's, that's it. And you, that the vision of the directors, that's, and, and when it comes to animation, like, <clears throat> excuse me, there's like, um, the, you gotta, you want to be able to, the better able you are to like, get that, like get that vision, understand yeah. it, recognize it and like work towards it like the more value you are as an, as like an animator. So like you'll get more opportunities to do cool stuff. If you're like knocking it out the park, like yeah. that's exactly what we wanted. Like, you know, you get it, you get it. Like that's the type of style we want mm -hmm. to see in this, or you took, you pushed the comedy to what we want to see. Like, you know, if you think about like a, a show like cloudy mm -hmm. or, something that's really just just where dumb is like the 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 big word on the wall like make it as dumb as you can you know when you have the type of like creativity to like to take a an idea and put a layer of dumb on it that's like yeah. makes people laugh like why did he do, why did you choose to make him do this like when something happened you know like it's just like it's such a stupid choice, but it makes everyone laugh every time. Right. That'll be like, you get it. You get what this movie is, like how silly we're trying to yeah. make this. And and so, you know, you got to be thinking about that. And so rather than like, oh, what, a, what is the choice that's going to make my demo reel look the best? Yeah. You got to be thinking what is going to accomplish, you know, what's important in this shot. Because every shot matters and me it's supposed to serve a purpose you know what yeah. i mean so and the yeah. big thing is to remember is that when you get that critique it's not speaking about you or your work yeah. it's about how you did the work for their vision not mm -hmm. like not saying oh you're crappy it's like no you did this assignment crappy <laughs> yeah 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 no exactly and a good good directors will like with a smile on their face just be like Nah, this isn't it. This isn't what we're, you know, like, like, dude, like they'll even say sometimes like, yo, the animation's great, but like, we need it to be like, the, you're missing the mark of what we're looking for with this shot. And, yeah. and, the, and, and, you know, the ruthless ones, the, 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 the kind, gentle ones will, will give it to you in a positivity sandwich or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, yo, this is great. This is great. Just change everything, but then this is awesome. You're 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 great. <laughs> you're just like, wait a minute, did you just tell me to change everything? <laughs> but like some directors, like um, my man, I got a, I love this dude, Chris Wedge. Uh, mm -hmm. He's like directed uh, I say she's like the voice of Scrap Scrap mm -hmm. World. He uh, he's he's so great because he doesn't hold back. He'll just be like, you know, I I gotta be honest, I, I didn't laugh. I didn't laugh. It's not good. It's not funny. You know, but then like when you nail it, he's like, that's it. That's what I wanted. But like, he's just hundred percent honest. He's going to give you, he's not going to sugarcoat anything. He's just like, yeah, you know, yeah, this, this, I know what you're trying to do. It's just not working. I don't, 
I actually, I don't have the answer. I don't know what you should do, but it's not this. <laughs> like, oh, taking notes, okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, so. So what was, what was your realization about what is needed from animators after becoming a co-director? And I think you had a love languages and analogy that I <laughs> So wait, say ask that question one more time. You said so what was your realization about what, what you needed from animators or what is needed from animators after becoming a co-director? Hmm. Oh man. Uh, so I'll tell you this. Uh so I feel like co-directing this short is has been an absolutely like like eye-opening experience just as far as just learning how to work with like different personalities like you start to you start to get like there's so much that i'm like oh i get it now yeah but, like i will have an idea you know because we're figuring out the story way before animation starts yeah and so when you have this vision like you're like oh yeah this is going to be it he's going to come in and he'll do this look and it'll be awkward and then it'll do something. And then when they animate it and it doesn't have that same amount of awkward pause or something's missing, you'd be like, why is this not working? And you're like, oh, cause they don't, I'm, I gotta communicate yeah. what the funny is in this. Like you gotta get it. Like you need to hold that pose, this and that. And like, you you recognize that like, not everyone is has that already in their mind. They right. haven't been sitting with this thing like you have. So, so what it's done is like, it's making it, it it's made me recognize that I got a part of what make would make will make me a better director is being able to 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 understand what it needs what I need to say to this person mm -hmm. to communicate that versus this other person because everybody's different man right. and like the other thing is you you learn like how different people have different you know strengths and weaknesses and so you'll like, you'll learn, like, I swear to you, there are times when I'll notice like, oh, this guy's like, I'm looking in his eyes through the Zoom call and I can tell he's one note away from just losing his shit. You know what I'm saying? And so you'll just be like, all right, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I need to, I need to like build him up right mm -hmm. now. Like, so I'll save these things and I'll just say like, yo, this is killing it. You're, you're you know, like you'll, you just like start to learn how to be a better, a good leader. It's like everything can, is like sports to me. Like it's <laughs> it's like if you're playing ball and you're looking at and you guys are losing and you're looking around and your team is like heads down. You this is not the time to be like, why'd you you missed the layup, Doug? Right, right. Like that's not the time. You gotta you gotta know how to like empower the troops. So right. so like uh, I feel like I'm I'm just like I'm I'm recognizing that. I'm like I'm just learning a lot of different lessons, man, and uh, just how to communicate better. I'm it's gonna make me a better animator because now when I'm assigned stuff or when I'm interacting with directors like on the next project, which mm -hmm. you know is that's coming up, like I'm just gonna have more of a like more understanding and, and with like okay, like let me try to hit your vision because I know how frustrating it is. Yeah. To, like, try to get someone to hit your vision and it's just not working. And meanwhile, the producer's like, so that shot is due on Friday. And you're just like, dude, it's Wednesday and he's not even close. And then you just got to accept what you got to compromise because there's yeah. the budget, the schedule, the, all the stuff that you got to consider. So it's, um, it's interesting, man. Uh, yeah. I don't know if that answers your question, <laughs> but. When I was a leader, when I became a leader, like, it was like, okay, your your supervisor would be like, okay, if you're not gonna make the deadline, just let me know. Yeah. And when you become a leader, you're like, yeah, you, if you just let me know, I could like move some stuff around or I could yeah. help you or I could bring somebody. But when you're in it, you're like, ah, but I, that's, then I'm gonna be like, I suck. Cause I, I'm yeah, gonna yeah, 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 and yeah. You realize how hopeful it is to just communicate. <laughs> yeah, that's real. Yo, that is, that's everything. I. I have learned so much about good leadership and I've had so many conversations about this too. Just like one of the things is what you just said, like making sure that they feel comfortable. You do not want the troops. I mean, I always call them my troops. Like I don't want them 
to look at me as not being like in the trenches with them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I am serving a role, but that doesn't mean that like I'm above you right. and you know, you need to fear talking to me like you will be three months from now when, when I'm animating again, like, you know what I'm saying? Like point is, is like, so establishing that level of communication and that comfort, like if you are struggling, come to me and be like, Matt, this is due on Thursday. Ain't no way I'm getting it done on Thursday. I need more time. Then I'm like, cool. We can work it out. Like you said, but what happens is a lot of times animators will kill themselves because they're just like, if I communicate that I'm struggling to, to hit a deadline or whatever, it's going to reflect poorly on me. Yeah. It'll show up in my reviews and all this stuff. And so it's like, I'm learning that like I'm getting a lot more out of my, my team by making sure that we establish right up the front, like, yo, we are in this together. Mm -hmm. if you let me know what you need. Yeah. When And I'll communicate to them when I'm struggling so yeah. that they, they don't, they know like, especially when that, when the, then the reason that I'm struggling is because of something that's going to impact them as well. So for instance, there's a time when we got a whole bunch of notes from the president mm -hmm. and, it, and it, and it meant that I had to go back to the, to the animators and be like, Hey, you three, y'all got, we got to, we're cutting three of your shots and you got to redo certain things. And I was like, Oh my God, what am I going to, how am I going to do this without them being like, Hey Matt, you know what I'm saying? Right. Because one way you could do it is just be like, hey guys, bad news, we're changing some stuff and we got to get rid of these shots and this and that and that's what it is, sorry, whatever. But then what I ended up doing instead was being like, yo, team, we got to have a meeting. Your boy just got hammered. And like, they'll be like, what happened? Because like, we've been, we, I've instilled the sense of like, I'm going to go out there as the leader, figure out what's going on and come back to the troops. And so I, I came back, was like, the president just wore me out. Like he, he ripped this, ripped that. We have to change this, that, and the other. And so like, I, I was fighting, trying to like resist, but it like, and so then what happens is those three guys who had to redo their shots were like, yo, it's all good, man. We got this. Like, what you need me to do? And I'm like, all right, Brock, I need you to do this, this, this. And then it's different because now it's a sense of like, I get why we got to make these changes. Like, yeah. we appreciate you fought for us. Right. And we and we know that like, this is not something that you're just doing willy nilly. Like, yeah. you, we're in this together. And so we're going to work hard. Why is a big piece of being a leader. Like, oh, really? Why is really? like, if you don't know why, then you just like. Just mad. <laughs> Yeah, because you just imagine somebody's just like, uh, yeah, change it. Because you, that's why. <laughs> and it's like when you know, like, oh, it's for this reason, that's that, yeah. whatever. Then it's then you're you're perfect. You're more of a professional about it. Like, all right, I, it sucks, but uh, you know, we got to do what we got to do. So, so I heard you tell like a line dancing story where it's that shows oh, yeah. how diversity is good and like we could add our little spice. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So can you tell yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Um so it's actually uh my, when I first started at Blue Sky in um two thousand like eleven or something, mm -hmm. we were working on Ice Age. Um I think it was uh, yeah Continental Drift and mm -hmm. um which is like the fourth one. And so uh, I just remember, and I'm just new, I'm new at Blue Sky. So that I don't really, uh, like not everybody knows me to, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm, I'm just the, the new dude. And so it was interesting because uh, we were having a meeting and they were trying to come up with, it was like a marketing meeting. And it was mm -hmm. like, hey, they brought a, a few of us in. Like they, they, Blue Sky does does a good job of like, identifying who the craziest people are <laughs> like and just be like all right we're gonna have a brainstorm meeting with the, the 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 main people that are like you know the producers the whatever whatever but let's sprinkle in some of the crazies from different departments like uh we all know that julie is a little she's she's like got a sense of humor she's always making people laugh bring her in here let's mm. get let's get matt from animation let's get so it's like a handful of us yeah. in there just like trying to spitball like silly ideas ways to like 
market the movie. And so like they were one of the things the marketing t- department was talking about was like, we really want to do like a flash mob because like that was when those flash mobs yeah. were like big. The wobble was like a big thing, right? Yeah. That 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 year. And so they were like, we should do a flash mob, like something that promotes the movie, but how? What can we do? You know what <laughs> I mean? And I remember being like, I I was just like listening, and I remember being like, we should make up a line dance. Like it was like, it's just I just said it, and they were like, what do you mean? And then I was like, I remember being like, oh well, you know, like half of these flash mobs are people coming together to do a line dance together, like or like a like a dance people know, like the Cupid Shuffle or the Wobble. Like the Wobble was the one that we keeps every time you see people doing this. <laughs> That's the wobble. And they were just like, oh, tell us more. You know what I mean? It was one of those things. And then I was like, I was like, yeah, if we came up with like a cart, like a silly for kids, like do the Manny, do the Sid, do whatever. It could be the like the Ice Age scrap shuffle or something. And uh, they were like, I remember they were like, uh, all right, we got a meeting this afternoon to continue the conversation. Can you throw something like together to like, show this because this was like towards the end of the meeting uh-huh. and then we'll we'll talk more about it. I was like sure so we go back I swear to you we go back <laughs> to my desk and I grab the two guys that sit next to me I'm like yo come with me to this little back room I'm just gonna shoot us just doing like a three-step sort of line dance or whatever and we on the spot were just like uh to the front and do this and take it back and do the manny and now Chris cross and do the granny and it was just like all these like we just made it up on the spot just for something to show, uh-huh. we showed it, and it was like gangbusters in there. Like people were like, "Oh, that's it! We're doing that! That's the we're doing it just like that! Ship it!" And I was just like, "Oh, snap!" And so, sure enough, before I knew it, it was like a thing. They were like, they they like cast animators to like work on it. Like we were gonna, we got the character doing the dance. We got John Leguizamo. I had to teach John Leguizamo the words. Cause he said the slaw. So I had to, I legit had him in the studio and I was like, no, John, no, you got to say it like this. Now step, step, wiggle your rump and walk it out like granny. And I was like, you got to keep on the beat, John, come on. And like, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. And like, it was amazing. Like actually it was at his house one time. Nice. Cause he, cause he was going, this is, this sounds so dumb. Like, cause this is a little dance, but he was going on um, like a morning show mm-hmm. to promote Ice Age, mm-hmm. and they were they were going to get him to do the dance on the show, John Leguizamo. And so they were like, uh, so somebody told me like, hey, he wants you to come by like the day before to to like go over the moves with him. So I was like, what, like to his house? And they were like, yeah, he lives down in because he lives in Greenwich or something down here in the city mm-hmm. in, in New York. And uh, so I just like took the train down and like went up and just rang his bell. He lives in like a beautiful brownstone type spot. And he was just there with his dog and his like little kid daughter. And they were just like, all right, so how's this thing go? Okay, to the left, and do the sit and then take it back and do the sit. And like basically point is, is that it ended up being a, it, it just became a thing that was, they created this like promotional marketing video they got people to do flash mobs all nice. over the world. So like there's a video now um, on YouTube, you can look up if you type in like the Sid Shuffle and it's like this video they put out. It's got like millions of views <laughs> over time. And and it's, it's nothing like, this isn't like, you know, nothing like that's for real, for real, like a big music sensation. But it was enough to where it was like something that people were using in their classrooms for like kindergarten and stuff. Yeah. Like I had a lot of people tell me like, oh, that's something that my I do with my students all the time. Like that's our little physical fitness for the like morning. Like everybody gets up and we put it on and they see the cartoon character uh-huh. doing the dance. And so like, uh, so point is, is that I was just like, yo, line dancing and stuff is a, you know, a, like it's a, I don't want to say line dancing is a black cultural thing, but like certain types of line dancing is definitely right. like a black cultural kind of thing we do. Um, you know, we got the electric slide on up to right. you know, all of it. We do this, you know what I'm saying? And so it was, it was just 
it was obvious to me that like, yo, they're line dancing, like they're doing a the wobble. Like, let's make up another one, like a different one. And uh, and at the time, I was definitely the only black person in the animation department at Blue Sky. Uh, now we have, we're up to two of us now. <laughs> but uh, at the time, it was it was just me. I mean, we've had a couple come and go since I've been there, but like, yeah. Um, Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's not a lot of us, and so that was an example of how just having one brother in the room right. could help lead to like, oh, that's not something we just just didn't wasn't obvious to yeah. the rest of us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and like I was just in a Facebook group where they were like, uh, list something that nobody else in this Facebook group has done, and you could be like, I taught John Luzamo of a line dance. Right, right. Like exactly. Like, I'm pretty sure you're like the only person in the world has done that. No one in the world has ever done that. I promise you. At his house. <laughs> At his house. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay, so so a few more questions. Like, okay, mm -hmm. how the heck did you end up on a uh, episode of Hell Day? <laughs> oh man, let's we get into the deep cuts now. Let's go. <laughs> so I'll tell you this. There. Uh, how do I say this story succinctly? Basically, uh, this first season of Hell Date, so before it had ever been aired, so mm -hmm. it wasn't on anyone's radar. Um, my homegirl in LA, like I have, I had a tribe in LA, like I, these, these family. Yeah. So we, by, you know, after being out there for a few years, like we would get together, just like there's a fight on TV. We had, we were, so we were, at somebody's house, all of us hanging out. And this one um, sister, uh, she was going around like, yo, I just got a job at BET working for BT Casting. And I remember it was like, oh yeah, congratulations, Elisa got this job, whatever. She was like, yo, we're casting for a black blind date show. You know what I mean? And so, you know, we had all seen those blind date shows. And so um, she was like, I need people to come out and audition. like." You guys are funny, like, you know, talking to the, some of the guys, like my friends and I. And she was like, y'all need to come and audition. Like, you might get on TV. And we were all like, no, nah, like, get out of here. We ain't trying to be on a <laughs> dating show. And so I'll never forget. She pulled me to the side. Like, she, we were in a hallway. And she was like, Matt, I, I know y'all not really trying to do this thing. But she was like, if you come, I promise you. I will get you on TV. Like you will be on the show. Uh -huh. And I was like, Alisa, like, I'm not, I'm gonna embarrass myself. And she was just like, Matt, you were gonna be so good on the show, this and that. And then me being just like the jokester that I am, like, I started thinking, like, yo, that would be hilarious if I was on a dating show. And then I was like thinking about like, I'm not gonna tell anybody, I'm just gonna like wait till it's like airing if it if this happens and then just like just tell text my friends or whatever like yo turn on bt real quick just like that was my in my head that's how i was gonna go mm -hmm. and so long like uh, this is long story short shorter long story shorter i uh i show up mm -hmm. to the audition and they ask me to fill out this Form about all the things I like about in women, which is hilarious because all they was doing was informing the actress on like what to do. So basically I'm like, you know, I like a down to earth girl. Like I don't like women that are too Hollywood. I like, you know, natural, this and that. And, and they asked me all these questions. I'm being charming and trying to make, you know, jokes and stuff to, cause I'm like, I need to get on. I want to get on the show. Cause I'm going to be a fool on the show. Right. And so, so I get on the show. They're like, you're you're gonna air on Tuesday, whatever. I was like, oh shoot, I'm be on this thing. So in my mind, I'm just like, I need to not play myself, but I need to be at least, I needed to be entertaining enough for them to air it. Cause I know I, I was aware that there were some that just don't get aired because it's just yeah. nothing happened or right. it's not fun. So I was like, all right, so I'm go I'm on this thing, and I'm just like. Let me try to be on my best, like whatever, whatever. Like the girl was telling me everything that was supposed to make me fall in love with her. Uh -huh. Cause like, they're like, I was like, oh, so, you know, like, let's, let's talk. You know, like everything's on camera. Like, what are you into? Like, what do you do here in LA? Like what's, what kind of social things you get into? And it was just like, 
all the stuff like, you know, I like animation and <laughs> NFL football, fantasy football and comic books. And I was like, what the hell? So she was like, they were trying to make me love this girl, right? But she was a little too extreme with it. Like, so there was always a little something I was like, weird. Like, she's a little like off. And um, Ooh. one of the things that made her a little off was she kept stealing, <laughs> stealing stuff. And so, and that's all, but so what's crazy is that while I'm on this date, I was like, oh man, like I'm not feeling her. So that's so I'm I'm not like confessing any love when they're doing a little interviews, which was thank God for that. Cause I would have really played myself. But I was like, you know what? She I really like her. She's dope. But I was like also like, yo, this chick is kind of crazy. And this is great because this is about to be the best blind day show ever because she is wilding. And then it got it just got worse and worse. And by the end, it was like, you know, she had stolen something that the alarms were going off and the guy was coming at me like, what are you? I let people watch the episode. I don't want to get into the detail. But point is, is that uh, at the end, they like, they accusing, are accusing me of, of stealing something. <laughs> And I'm on the show, like defending myself, but in the back of my head, I'm like, this is the best thing ever because this show is like great. Like, this is how entertaining is this? And then I start getting posted in, in my in my behind. I turn around and it's like the little guy dressed in the devil's outfit. He's like, you're on hell date. And I'm like, what the hell is hell date? Like, this is crazy. And so anyway, uh, that's how I ended up on that thing. And what's funny is that, oh, God, man, you can edit this stuff. Uh, I... Uh, I I remember being, I had been on that, that date all day. Like we started in the morning and we're driving around. It's a whole film crew, right? Mm -hmm. You got camera people, sound people. All these people are not on the air, but you're, they're like, when you're up there like sitting down, eating and talking to the girl, it's like the camera guy, the sound guy, the, the producers, they're right. like, and they're not letting you interact until they start recording. Cause they don't want to miss like, yeah. anything like you. Yeah. So whenever we were moving from one location to the next, like from one part of the day to the next, they would separate us and I'd be riding in a car with the, like this film crew, like some of the guys. So we got cool. We're talking about like life stuff. Well, who's your favorite MC, this and that. By the end of the day, like when it's like everyone's laughing and you realize the whole day, you are the only one that was not in on this joke. Like you're like looking around and you're just like, you too, like all of you, betrayed me and it's like everybody's like yo sorry dude you, you were great anyway they they just were like all right like the girl who I had spent this whole day with she completely changes like she's just like thanks matt way to be a good sport i'm like you don't even talk like that like what the hell and she's just like she's just like all right that's that's enough uh, for me today and she's just like all right i'm going home and she like leaves and then like so just like they all leave and there's just one guy's like uh, so you want me to take you back home? And I'm just like holding my stuff. I'm like, uh, I got, I, I turn on my phone and I have a text from, from um, a friend like, yo, we're around the corner just having some drinks or whatever. So I was like, just take me over there. I'm going to go get a drink with the guys or whatever. I get there and that chick, Elisa, is there with my friends. And I walk in and I got a suit on, like a blazer. And they're like, why are you all dressed up? And I just don't answer. I'm just looking at Elisa like, <laughs> Was that tonight? And I was like, and she was like, I'm so sorry. I don't know, but I knew you were great, this and that. And so it was one of those things where she just set me up and got me on that show. And so the end of the story is I was like, just make sure you give me a heads up before it airs so I can tell my people. Mm -hmm. She doesn't. And so I'm on a real date. i never forget this. I was on a real date in Culver City. And I was like, Sitting there, like it was like a first date, and next you know my my phone is keeps buzzing. I'm like stopping it. I'm like, damn. And then I'm like, yo, hold on, there might be something going on, you know, because it's like my phone is just constantly vibrating and ringing. And like I, I look, and it's like 57 text messages. And like the, I open it up, and the first one is like, what the fuck are you doing on BET right now? Like my mom, my cousins, everybody's like, it spread, and it was just like. Hilarious. My grandfather's like, I was watching the BET and I'll be daggone if my grandson and just pop up almost had a stroke. <laughs> like, yeah, it, was, 
It's crazy. So that was Ooh. one of the like most ridiculous things that that I experienced while I was out there. So yeah, I am on season one, uh, hell date, uh, the klepto <laughs> episode. <laughs> so yeah. um, you did some voice acting for Spies in Disguise, and our yeah. boy Dre uh, Andre Rodriguez drone ends up killing your character. <laughs> oh yeah. How do you, how was to get your your additional fifteen seconds of fame? <laughs> yeah, so right, 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 right. So one thing that I do a lot, I've been doing this since um since the Sony days, is like helping out with scratch um, voice audio voice recordings. Mm -hmm. So um, for people that aren't familiar, like before they they get the actual voice talent. In to record the lines, they they have to test out the lines, yeah. cut them into the you know the story panels, and like watch the editorial cut with the scratch lines to make sure that it works. Like the jokes yeah. are funny, like because stuff on paper sometimes doesn't work when you hear, yeah. it. and sometimes you want to try different ways. Like, is it funnier if you say it dry, or is it funnier if you say it like loud or whatever? And you don't want to waste time with Will Smith, right? Right. Trying to find it because Will Smith costs a million dollars a session. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm free. And <laughs> so like, I, I'm all right, I'm just getting paid my hourly. So so what they what happens is they identify in these studios, what they often do is just identify like a handful of people that they can always call on to come and record some lines to test it out, to mm -hmm. test out the, the, the script. And so uh, for me, what ended up happening, this happened twice, well, Twice what I, I ended up as a result of doing the scratch recording, ended up getting into the actual production. But um for Spies in Disguise, what happened was uh I was doing the the recordings for Lance Sterling. So that's the one of the main characters. He's got tons of lines. And they with this specific film, they were changing the script so much. What ended up happening was they started feeling bad because they kept calling me in. And you, and you keep in mind, I'm still trying to hit my animation deadline. So I'm like yeah. working on these shots and like I'll get a call. And I, it got to the point where I was like, oh, no. And I pick it up and they'd be like, Matt, yo, we just need you to come back. We just got to get two more lines because we 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 recorded two lines earlier this morning. We put it in the cut. We, we want to adjust the way you said this. So can you come in just real quick? So I was coming back so many times that they started, they felt so bad that after a while, cause I was doing this for like a year, they were mm -hmm. like, you've spent so much time pouring your voice talent into this thing. What well, something that will never be seen on screen. Like we wanna like give you, hook you up and let you do the voice of just a background character. So you have your name in the credit as a voice actor. I was like, let's go. So for the first time ever in my, you know, whatever 15 16 years in working in this industry i had a uh, voice in a theatrical release so um spies in disguise there's a this security guard and they actually took the time he's a black dude they put a little like a gray gray uh beard on him it's it, at the time i didn't have the my beard wasn't quarantine levels it was just stubble so uh -huh. they just had like gray stubble and he had my last name on his, he's a soldier. It says Mon, and he's standing up there and like, he has one line and the line is like, hey, Lance, what's happening, man? And that's it. Like Lance Sterling comes up with his, the fake Lance. It's actually the bad guy. And then right after the guy comes up and I say that line, a drone comes up that was modeled by my brother from another, Andre Rodriguez. And the drone comes up and just kills my character. And I'm just like, so I got, I say two things I say, Man, Sterling, what's happening, man? And then, and then I say, ah! and then that's it. <laughs> and so, but here's what's crazy. Uh, I, uh, my family has a tradition started by my mama, mm -hmm. who she's like super proud. Um, always been one of those types of parents. Hangs up everything you, every art piece of artwork, every A you get on a test on the refrigerator. She, since the first. Uh, movie that I worked on will invite the entire church, all the cousins, all the aunties, uncles, and we go to the same screening, the same showing at some theater in Delaware. And oftentimes we are the only, like the entire 
we it'll be like 50 to like it'll be like 70 of us sometimes mm -hmm. and it will be it will be in a small theater and it'll just be us mm -hmm. and so when we went to see spies in the skies we filled the whole small theater because she invited like i said everybody and so before the movie uh started right when it's, the previews were coming out i stood up and was like everyone listen up this is this film is special and that i actually have a line in it and i'm good it, but it comes and goes like that so pay attention because when i say i'm gonna say something and that means it's coming and so <laughs> it was funny because that that scene was coming and i was like here it comes and everybody's like oh and then you hear Lance Sterling, what's happening, man? And everybody's like, oh! <laughs> and I was like, all the kids were like, yeah, Uncle Matt. <laughs> well, so, uh, that's my little. Like the five, what is it, the five heartbeats where the mom is like. Yeah, oh. exactly. <laughs> exactly. That was my mom. <laughs> my baby's famous. <laughs> so, yeah. <sighs> that's, that was my, my, uh, uh, literal five seconds of fame on a movie. <laughs> All right. So, uh, okay. Can you tell us a little bit about higher self? What was your journey to the adventure and what, what are you trying to accomplish? Oh yeah. 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 So in addition to cartoons and stuff, I, uh, I've also always been kind of, or at least like as an adult, like into, just like personal challenges and just self improvement and all kind of stuff like that. So, um, the story behind the higher self challenge is like interesting because what ended up happening was I had a wild weekend where I was getting into all the things with my friends. Like we went camping actually, and you know it was you know when you just do a weekend camping as an adult you learn quickly that it's not about nature. It's more about drinking and eating burgers and hot dogs and just just drinking. That, I sit, <laughs> just, that's basically, I mean, sitting around a fireplace eating s'mores and playing games and just like all that stuff. So uh, after like three days of that, on the way back, we were all in the car just like, oh, I'm going vegan. I'm drinking water. I'm going to fast. I'm going to go back. I got to work out. I got to, I got to, I got to detox, cleanse, you know? And so I was like, for three, for the next 20, like three weeks, I am not eat drinking, no other things, you know, I'm not partaking in those other activities. I'm going to um, eat no meat, like no processed food. I was going to do this like strict, you know, nutritional challenge. And I was also like, and I'm going to work out every day. So mm -hmm. for three weeks straight every day, like this is what I'm doing, drinking whatever, 150 ounces of water, whatever. I had made these claims. And then, you know, to keep it like completely full disclosure, like at the same time, it's like this, because it's kind of funny. A guy I was following on Instagram was like, fellas, starting on Monday, we are going to do a semen retention challenge. That means no sexual activities. We're going to learn how to overcome our animal, whatever. And I was just like, I'm doing that too. Why not? Like, I was like, I'm going to do it all. Like, this is going to be three weeks of just like extreme, extreme, extreme <laughs> discipline and all that stuff. And so what ended up happening was because I added that element to it, I was just like, shoot, I'm like going to be a monk for three weeks. Like, I might as well meditate. So I started meditating and 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 I and I was intermittent fasting. So for three weeks, I, I did a number of these things. I was, like I said, plant-based diet, meditating, intermittent fasting, working out, um, all of this. And uh and and at the towards the end, oh damn, there's one part I'm forget. My another friend, this is how the universe works. Like Things aligning the same way I ended up at Blue Sky, like stars aligning. Yeah. Like the same, that, that guy challenged me to like refrain from the sexual stuff. But then another friend of mine was like, I'm challenging everybody to do 30 days of gratitude where mm -hmm. you post something you're grateful for on Instagram every day for 30 days in honor of a, of a close friend of mine that passed away. Mm -hmm. And it was like... Um, I'm going to give everyone the topics for every one of those 30 days. And it was like, 
day one was like family, day two was like friends, day three was like work, nature, whatever, music, whatever. And so I was doing these, this challenge. And what's crazy is that on day 21, the day I was finishing my gangster fast and that it was tough. So by the 21st day, I was like, oh my God, like I did it. I can't believe it. And uh, and it just so happened that the the topic for that gratitude challenge for the day 21 was accomplishment. Mm. And so I was like, universal line, I was like, I might as well share what I've been doing personally. So I, on Instagram, I posted a picture of something and I was like, I've been for the last 21 days doing this challenge that I just completed. And I feel very proud of myself for like, not giving in to the temptations to to quit when it got hard and all this stuff. And because I posted that, people saw it and started asking like, yo, when are you doing that again? That sounds like an awesome challenge to do. Like, we'd like to join. And so that led to me trying to make it a thing. Like, I was yeah. like, all right, I'm going to I'm gonna try to get more. I'm going to do it again and get more people to do it. And what ended up happening is way more people got down then I, I expected to be like, all right, I'm going to do it again with like eight of my friends. But it ended up being like people were sharing it. They were like, I got all my cousins to do it. Or I, I shared it with, you know, my mm -hmm. co-workers. And, and it's five of us. And it's like I created a Facebook group, ended up being like 150 something people. Nice. And so then to end the story, we did it. Uh, we actually did it in November. So we started November 1st and the day 21 was like Thanksgiving Day. So it was like it was awesome. And then um, after the fact, there were people that were coming up to me that told me how much it changed their lives. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, like, and that, that was something I hadn't expected to affect me the way it did. Like, I was like, oh, I'm a, I like, like changing lives in that way. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that made, that was gratifying. And so what happened was, uh, <clears throat> I think a, a few people came up to me and, you know, after the fact, and they were like, hey, I heard about this thing you were doing. Can you tell me what's it? What is intermittent fasting? I've been hearing about it. Like, what's that about? And I have to explain what's meditation. Like, I'm a Christian. I don't know about that. Like, is that? Yeah. And I have to explain. Like, is you know, it's this. This is what it is. It's not. It's not a spirit, a religious thing. You know what I'm saying? And that in that way. Um, and so I, I realized, like, I need. It would be smart for me to create like a website. Yeah. That just yeah. had all that information, and it's a not for profit sort of thing. It's just information to just direct people to. And so that that got me to like, just create the higherself.com website um, and just put just like information about those practices, meditation, affirmations, gratitude, journaling, you know, plant, whole food, plant-based diet stuff. And it's something that I, I was putting a lot of time into and energy um, months ago. I kind of like, it's up there. Mm -hmm. I haven't, I'm going to revisit it soon to like, take it to another level because what my my vision for it is uh is to eventually not only explain some things but then have like useful like videos so for instance if you're like all right i want to get into the habit of meditating regularly it would be nice if you don't use the calm app or hot headspace yeah. to be able to just be like oh i know that if i go to higherself.com i can just click these little you know play buttons and just have a guided meditation or I can, without going to the gym, I can just go to higherself.com and I know there's like a library of 10 minute video, like in-house calisthenic workouts I can do, just like follow along, you know, P90X style, but but more just like, more for, more, I, I want it to be something that's like uh, more accessible to yeah. like average person. So like, okay. if my auntie is in intimidated by it, then it's too, and then I need to like, I need to make it like, I don't, I don't need it, the barrier to entry to be like, you got to do 20 burpees without, you know, and then 18 pull-ups and, you know, like yeah. I needed it to be something that's like, oh, I can do this because mm -hmm. you don't, it don't need to be too crazy. Like, that's the whole point. Like, you don't have to do anything super extreme to like see tremendous result, results. So yeah. that's the, that was the, I'm sorry for the long no explanation, but that's that's the uh, whole story behind higher self. <laughs> so, last question: um, okay. If you had a documentary about yourself, 
what would what would be included besides your animation career? Oh man. I am, I feel like I've got so many different random interests, man. Like, uh, yeah, we I didn't mean, even talk about your mutter face. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, straight up. Like, again, like, I love a good old fashioned challenge. Like, if you, you can get me to do a lot of dumb things by just being like, I bet you can't, and then <laughs> fill in the blank, you know? Like, I, do you, you know Brian Vincent Rhodes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, BVR, that's my man. He's like in the biking now. And and I don't know how, I have, I have never really owned a real bike, but like I, since I've been an adult, like I've rode bikes as kids, right? But like, I'm already like, yo, we should, what if we biked across country? Who does that? We could put, make a whole plan, a whole trip. It'll take us months. We could stop all over the, what, what like, just cause it would be hard, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, I did go through a period where me and a, a, a buddy of mine, we were just like, yo, let's do all these mud races. And we ended up doing the the, the Spartan trifecta, which is the, the, the three levels of the Spartan race from the five mile one to the 10 mile one to then the like 16 mile one or whatever, 13 miles, um, almost died uh, on that last one, the beast. So if you haven't done a Spartan beast, they call it a beast for a reason. Because my boy said, like, everybody want to be a beast till it comes time to do what beasts do. And we had and, it, and it's, that that beast hit me like pledging there, where I was like, what have I got myself into? I'm I'm three miles in and I'm I got 10 more to go. And right. already my body is just like locking up on me. It's like, <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> they had me swimming across frigid water and crawling and climbing it was it was nuts so um i'm into that i'm into mm -hmm. snowboarding mm -hmm. um i'm into like i'm right now i'm getting really into like way more into storytelling mm -hmm. than uh i was ever before meaning like i'm like coming up trying to conceptualize like ideas for like you know short films mm -hmm. you know feature length films graphic novels. Mm -hmm. I even have an idea that for some project that's like um, Black is King, like that Beyonce music right. video thing. I'm like, I got an idea like that. That's not even a movie. Like that's just a, a project. Like just yeah. like those kind of things. Because I got to the point where I'm like, I feel like the the most, the thing that I have to give to the world, the, the most impactful thing is like not cool looking animation. You know what I mean? It's like, a story that's going to like make somebody feel something yeah. and, and maybe change and look at the world different. And like, mm -hmm. that's something that like, I'm, I feel myself moving more into that. So yeah. Um, yeah. Like writing, maybe directing something. Mm -hmm. We'll see. But uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, yeah, that's, that's, those are, those are my, my, some of my interest. I mean, I'm in the sports and yeah, kind of stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I feel like I guess the, the thing I'll say is that the the best animators. <clears throat> I I shouldn't say that because there are some. I was going to say the best animators are animators that that have a life outside of animation. Um, and you know they they say in order to create the illusion of life, you should have a life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I, I I second that. And I was about to say, yeah, the best animators have, but that wouldn't be, there's some animators that are nasty. That's, and it's because that's all they do is just like eat, sleep and breathe animation. But that's not a, a life that I, I would recommend for right. you. I would say this, one of the biggest lessons, this is the last thing I'll say, cause I, I know I'll run my mouth um, <laughs> about that is about having other interests. Yeah. What I've learned, and I'm using my back scratch as a pointer right now. What I have learned, it's like a little hand. What I have learned <laughs> is <laughs> that if you connect your sense of self with your animation, you're setting yourself up for getting your ass kicked your whole life throughout life. Like my, what I've learned is that the more other outside interests that I have, the the better I am at just maneuvering through like my animation career because when things get bad I don't go I don't ride the roller coaster 
with, mm -hmm. with everyone else. So like, if you are struggling on a shot, you know, and, and your whole life is animation, then your life is struggling. Cause you're just like, cause I, you can have that moment. Like when you get hit, like I did on cloudy, where you're just like, Oh, who am I? <laughs> oh, I thought I was better than this. And it could really mess you up. And a lot of young artists, they go through that, man. Yeah. I, I, I meant to you know, like, people. It's a job just like any other job. Exactly. It ain't, that is not, that doesn't define who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, you just go, you just go in there, you, you do your best. And sometimes you're going to rock it out. And sometimes you're going to take an L. And, and, and in both cases, that don't mean shit. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. like you could be the, you could be hitting that in a thousand, knocking out the part every time home runs, people could be like, he's the next or she's the next Glenn Keane. And guess what? Go out in New York City and stop a hundred people in Times Square and be like, you know who Glenn Keane is? hundred people will be like, I don't know who the hell is that? <laughs> the best animator of all time. Nobody cares. <laughs> you go to your grave the greatest animator and nobody will give a shit because it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Just, you gotta be happy. <laughs> so I try to tell people like, yo, animate the, the best you can, but like, yo, don't get caught up in this thing where it's like, that's your identity because you're dooming yourself, man. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's not, uh, you got, you need to diversify like a good, like a good portfolio. Yeah. Know? You know what I mean? So. That's it. All right. So where can people follow you on social media? Um, I am on Instagram. My name is Monday06. It's M-U-N-N-D-A-Y, like my last name. So mm -hmm. Monday06. Um, and uh, that's pretty much the only one that I'm really on like that. I, I, ha I have a Facebook that, I, that I'm also on. Uh, and that's just, uh, I think, Mun3D, M-U-N-N, the number three letter D. Mm -hmm. But, um, yo, IG is like, you know, pretty much, I can only handle like one, you know, and that's, that's old head stuff, you know, like, it's so funny. If anyone's listening to this and y'all, and you are not an old head yet, all that stuff that you laugh about that have like, when you see the old heads, you're like, yo, that whole, like, what are you listening to? This ain't music. Like, and you think you're not going to be that person like this way, because <laughs> there is going to come a time. Where the technology is going to be changing, some of you just be like, I'm just, I just, I'm just going to stay here, and then just be like, what TikTok? What's TikTok? <laughs> I ain't got time for learning all this new stuff. And y'all got new. I was, I remember priding myself on being like, I always know who the new rappers are, and then I just like, I couldn't keep up. Like Lil Jody and uh, Lil Baby and Lil every. I'm like, yeah, nah, you just fall off after a while, so. Yeah, when I was at, like in high school or college, you can like uh, be up on us on a slang. But then in my twenties, I was like, "Can y'all just speak English?" <laughs> yeah, like y'all get on my nerves now. Because <laughs> I can't. I, I'm not in this environment where I'm able to keep up with all this new slang. Yeah. Like I remember when uh on Fleek first came out, I was like, I was so confused. And then I like it took me so long to learn what cap was. <laughs> cap. <laughs> yeah, like no cap. Or cap. <laughs> I do not know what that is. <laughs> what, the, what is that? <laughs> kids be like, oh, no cap, which means like no lie. But wow, I've you know, never heard that. It, it took me so long. I'm like, does it mean no? Like, does cap mean lie or does no cap mean lie? No, yeah, well, that's <laughs> hilarious. Like, I don't, I don't know whether I'm saying it the, like and then using it in the opposite. Mm -hmm. I have like a whole Facebook status. Like <laughs> that's so funny. See what you what I found is that I just need to keep a team of young boys on my side that I can always just like <laughs> quietly text, like, yo, what does it mean when someone says XYZ and they'll be like, yo, man, da, da, da. you're like, all right, then I can just front. See, because there was part of me that was like, you know what I'm saying? No cap, right? Right. And then later I was gonna be like, <laughs> yo, Kevin, okay, what's no cap? Because I definitely lied and pretended like I knew what that meant. <laughs> But I'll tell you this, what I'm learning is like, the older I get, the less I care also about people judging me. So like, I'll be like, I don't know what that means. And I don't care that you know that I don't know that. 
<laughs> oh my god, that's great. hilarious! Because I your face, I'm like, you do not. Yeah, I'm just like, yeah, right. <laughs> Everybody knows that, right, guys? <laughs> so silly. <laughs> well, Matt, thank you for being on this platform. Like, I am hurting from laughing so much. Awesome, <laughs> sweet. <laughs> No, thank you for having me. This was great. It's, it's been a long time coming. You yeah. know I mean? So I'm glad I could be on here. I hope everybody enjoyed this video and I want you to like so I know it's real. Comment and tell me how you feel. Subscribe to Silver Deal. Sign up for post notifications to start your zeal. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Awesome. Peace.